lunch and we're at our RV. RVs are a mini house but in a car and you have to drag them if you if you don't buy the ones where the, you had to drive in them. Okay, um, not show us. Eh, and uh, Mr. Blair going to help us. Hello guys. I'll be demonstrating the RV for you today. So uh, yeah, we'll start with the rooftop. Okay. The rooftop, it's made out of vinyl material. So every two to three months, you want to go and do an inspection on your rooftop. So along your seams, duct work, air ventilation, check around all those seams and make it make sure it's sealed and tight. You see it's like the cracks that you would see in your hand, your palm, mm -hmm. and you want to go ahead and actually seal those up. The, the, the product and material is called Dicor. It's a self-leveling adhesive. So that's just something you just put up there. Don't use any type of silicone based up there. Silicone based will eat through the vinyl. So always use Dicor up on the rooftops. So, and I'll go in here and uh, extend out your awning. Oh, come down, please. Hi. fall down that lets you know you're at the bottom of it plus you'll see the bar itself exposed so just stop it at that point because if you continue okay. to hold down the button okay. it's gonna roll it upside down at that point okay so that's fully extended there and you do have lights underneath the awning now the awning is what we call a fair weather awning there's basically three principles to it you go to bed you put it up storms mm -hmm. come and you put it up or if you're leaving you put it up okay. now on the sides here you do have pitch arms so mm -hmm. if you're sitting here or sitting there and you want the rain to run off a certain direction, mm -hmm. you can loosen these up here. And then you would just... Push in? There we go. Oh, okay. Pull them or push them in, yep. And then you can do both sides. In the morning times, the sun's going to be coming in lower. So if you do both pitch arms, you can actually get it lowered about that level. So that'll be a little bit better. The only thing with those pitch arms is, is just make sure you have it completely straight across when you go to put it in again. And just make sure that these are not tight. That way it can slide in. So yeah, with the awning, definitely, you know, this is a good, good uh, weather right now. Now, if there is a light rain and you kind of keep an eye on the radar, and you know it's going to be raining for about 10, 15 minutes, just let it, leave it out and just let it dry. Because sometimes when you roll it up with all the moisture, then you're going to get mildew and mold underneath the awning, and then it's just more stuff you got to clean. This is so. fascinating. <laughs> so over here, you do have two speakers, radio speakers. They are water resistant, not waterproof. Okay. So rain and washing the units, fine. If you take a hose and hold it up there for a couple minutes, that's kind of bad. So any, any other type of water moisture is fine for those units there. Okay. Now right here, you do have the ventilation <clears throat> for your okay. range top. So when you are cooking, have okay. that open and exposed. And okay. then when you're not cooking, close it, just in case little bugs and ants might not go through there and go on the inside of the oh unit. God. Okay. So, and then right here, that's just the ventilation portion for your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And then it's just gonna slowly just drip out condensation there. Mm -hmm. You do have a 110 reciprocal for your outlet. So TV, radio, is anything you wanna plug up uh, for the outside, you can go ahead and hook it up here. If you do have a TV, that would be the hookup for your cable satellite antenna portion. Okay. And then right next to me over here, that's just the exhaust for the heat. Sometimes people will get screens to put on there so mud daubers don't go in there and start creating nests and homes inside that. Okay. We got your water heater tank right here. It is electric and gas. Okay. So right now with this, you got your blow off valve, which we don't recommend pulling just because of all electrical components. If you want to test your hot water, just mm -hmm. go on the inside and turn on the hot water valve and see if it comes out for a little bit. Okay. Uh, for this unit, it does a six gallon tank for the okay. water heater. And right here is going to be your drain tube. Okay. So when you do want to drain it, when you do the winterization or dewinterizing, mm -hmm. that's where you go and pull that out, let some of the water out. It's already been dewinterized, so there's nothing additional you have to do. Okay. Um, and also this here is a magnesium anode tube or rod that'll be self-sacrificing for the elements so that'll just kind of keep everything running and that tube itself will self-sacrifice instead of the elements and the container there getting eaten away so that's pretty much straightforward now that will get hot when you start using your hot water so be very cautious of that area right there and then 
right underneath, which is hard to see. You got these red, red and blue tubes. Those are your low point drain tubes. Okay. So when you want to clear out your water lines yeah. and then add in the coolant antifreeze or vice versa to dump out and flush out the antifreeze and coolant and add in the water. So that's just for your winterization part. Over right here is going to be your stabilizers. That's on the all four corners. But there's no plug? No. Uh, okay. That'll be on the inside portion. Okay. I see. So you have to access it from an access panel. Okay. And then on four corners, you have your stabilizers. Okay. Uh, I saw something use a drill, right? Yeah. Yeah. It does come with a manual hand crank, but okay. definitely just get a drill bit with an impact wrench. Save you a whole lot of time, hassle, and aggravation instead of manually doing all four. Okay. So, <clears throat> yep. We'll move on down this way here. You sell the you okay. sell the adapter, right? Looks like you need an adapter. Yeah, yeah, okay. we have that. Yep. Okay, yeah, it has those little the little hole slide the little uh, slides in them. Yep. Okay. Your tires they have been filled mm -hmm. with nitrous. You don't have to refill them with nitrous. That's just how they all come standard. And uh, with the wheels, they've already been torqued for the lug nuts down to 110 pounds of pressure. Uh, we recommend for your first time driving in increments of you know 20 to 25 miles up to 100 miles just double check them okay. and then before every trip in the future you go on just to okay. make sure that those are actually really really tight you said 110 110 i believe Pound, uh, uh, pounds of, of, of torque, torque yeah. Pressure. yeah yeah i yeah. have the torque wrench okay yeah. right. and then over here that's going to be for your on onboard water your fresh water tank Okay. So you can just stick your hose right in there. You don't need a pressure regulator for this portion here. You just stick a hose in and walk away. Really? When it gets I filled, <laughs> well, that's for your city water portion. Ah, okay. Yeah, you do so this need that. This is for the gray water, black water. Uh, neither. This is for your onboard water. So if you're going to a campsite that has no water, period, this is where you take your own water with you. Ah, and that's okay. it's either 30 or 40 gallons. I'm not okay. sure exactly, but up okay. to 30 to 40. So yeah, this is for your fresh water, your drinkable water, or for your toilets and sinks and showers. Home. I'm sorry? I take it from home. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Daddy, I hope now, you can hear your voices. Now when you're traveling though, you definitely want to empty, which is, oh, is it up here? Yep, it's actually behind this wheel up here. You see that little lever there, the white okay. one? Yes. If you flip that valve down, it'll drain out the water. Okay. So before you go on your trips or you're leaving your trips, you want to drain your water. Okay. Just because all that extra weight is yeah. going to then create that container and bow it out. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to snap the belts up there and rip out from the underbelly. I see. So always drain that water. Um, unless you're going on a trip to where you know there's no rest stop areas for 100 miles or something. Right. Then maybe have, you know, 5, 10 gallons of water in there okay. just so you can bit. use the restroom. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Can we go in? Hold on a second. Let's follow. Uh, yeah, we're gonna yes. do the outside, but yeah. I mean, you guys are more than welcome to go on in if you want. I wanna go with you, dude. <laughs> I wanna okay. go in there. So over here is the storage oh, area. Way, way. <gasps> uh, it is magnetic, so it will stick up there like that. Now you do have a work light underneath here. That's just right. the physical on and off button to flip. Oh, I want to press it. I want to press it. So you got a decent, decent amount of storage area plus the uh, the bed in there. You lift up the bed and you get access to the underbelly over here as well too. Oh. Okay. So and they'll come out and install this hitch work here in a little bit. Okay. Ah. So go ahead and head on over here. Now with your power it? tongue jack. Should uh -huh. close this? You can if you want. It don't matter. You do have it on and off for a work light. It's right. a little hard to see at the moment. And then you can retract it and extend it. Now, if for some reason your battery's dead and you need to manually do it, mm -hmm. in there there is a manual hand crank and you'll just pull up this rubber piece here okay. and go ahead and do that. I don't have a little knife. Sometimes those are hard to pull okay. out. Okay. But yeah, that's where you get access to manually do it. Now, with this here for like the seven way, mm -hmm. when you hook it up to your vehicle, just make sure your vehicle is powered off first in the oh. off position. Okay. Once when you hook this up to your vehicle, then you can turn it on. Okay. The only reason why we recommend uh, doing that is just surges, so you're not gonna kill your battery, blow any fuses on your car oh or God. over here. So make sure the vehicle's off, hook it up, and then you can power it on. Okay, you gotta remember. Now, when you hook that up, your brake lights will work. Mm -hmm. As far as your side running lights go, mm -hmm. if your vehicle has the option mm -hmm. that puts it in auto running lights on your vehicle, mm -hmm. you have to turn that off and put it in the manual for the actual auto, for the running lights position itself, instead of auto running lights. Okay. Once when you put it into the manual running lights position, and then they'll run on the side unit. Okay. But the so, back brake lights are gonna work regardless though. Okay. So take off the, uh, the auto running lights and put it in manual. Now you do have a safety breakaway cable. 
This is it's in case the trailer were to fall off your vehicle. This is going to pull the safety cable and put on the brakes on this so this isn't just rolling down the highway. Okay. Uh, we recommend getting some type of uh, separate carabiner or hook. Okay. Because a lot of times people will take these and interweave them in the chain links. <laughs> That's going to create tension. And then if you have to create, then you have to uh, do a tight turn, it's even more tension, then you're going to rip this out. Okay. So just get a separate carabiner and hook this up with these on the same little peg, but separate though from, okay. from that one. Uh, why is it leaking? That's from the uh, air conditioner. Ah. Yep, condensation dripping down. So if you have a little dog or your cat, you can put a little bowl there and you can have some water for them. <laughs> now you do have two 20 pound okay. tanks for LP. They are completely full. And then you have a knob over here and right now you can see that it's full when it's empty. That G will turn into an R and it'll be red instead of green. Okay. And then there is no on or off valve. It's uh -huh. just left or right. That's okay. all it is. So right now I have your right one or your left one, excuse me, turned off mm -hmm. and the right one turned on. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, you just flip it over and change out the other one. Okay. This is so fascinating. <laughs> and you do have a brand new battery, 12 okay. volt deep cycle marine battery. Is now, it uh, what's called AGM or not? AGM? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just the uh, standard mar marina batteries. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you have the hooked up to your vehicle, that will trickle charge. So it okay. will slowly charge up the battery when it's hooked up to your vehicle. Okay. Uh, which is a pretty nice feature. Okay. And then for your power cords, your power cord is a 30 amp power cord. Okay. If you go to a camping site to where they only have 50 amp hookups, you can get a pigtail to go from 30 to 50. Okay. Or if you want to hook it up, you know, at your house or any type of residential areas yeah. down to a 20 or 15 amp, you can step down that way too. Okay. So there is a plethora of options to figure out which way you want to go. Is this okay. drinking water? No. No, oh, I wouldn't so do it. This is only for the cat. Yeah. For the, for the animals, yeah. <laughs> what about this? What's this? Are you going to that? Yeah, we'll, we'll put that back up. And then for your lid here, mm -hmm. you can get some type of bungee straps if you want. Okay. So when you put them down, Okay. The bungee straps will come underneath here right. and pull that down. But for the most part, it should be self-sufficient by putting it down. Okay. When you put it back on the actual LP tanks, you want your thumb screws mm -hmm. to be the closest to your hardtop area, just because okay. that's where it opens up. Okay. And if you had it the opposite direction, the wind could potentially flap that up and then rip this up. So okay. that way wind blows it and keeps it down. Right. And pretty much you can do everything right here. You can turn them on, right. you can go left or right. So really the only time you need to remove this is when you need to get a physical tank replaced. Okay. So I'm gonna put these back on. And yeah, the, the wind's starting to pick up a little bit. So we'll roll that awning in a little bit even though we are just right here. Better be safe than sorry. install on the roof then I go different than the rock, right? This is just for the portable. Yeah, that's just for the portable. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and you got your two stickers here. Mm -hmm. The top one here is going to be for the VIN number, okay. which is located right here in the bottom left corner on that sticker. Okay. And then down here is just the, the specifications for the tires. Okay. 65 pounds of pressure requirement. And okay. like I said, they've already been torqued down for 110 pounds of pressure. Okay. Now, if you want... If you want a quick, easy access for a kill switch for your battery, it's just right over here. Okay. So it's just a simple turn on and off. Okay. Is this storage again? Yes. Yeah, right. Other storage. Yeah. <laughs> if you want it. And here's a, a hand one for the uh, stabilizers. Okay. And then the other one, which is your standard three quarters inch, so you can get a little drill bit for the tongue jack. Okay. And then use an impact <laughs> wrench. Okay. Something like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, and you can lock it. Yeah, yes okay. sir. Yep. It's the what we call the 751 keys, which okay. just about every camper has the same storage type keys. So okay. if you were to lock something in there and you lost your keys or can't find them, just ask one of your camper neighbors and they probably have the same key. Okay. So, All right. and uh, right here, we do have a rubber guard, which okay. we do recommend. When you're doing the inspections on your roof every two to three months, do the inspections on this seal part here. Yes. Uh, we recommend getting some type of uh, rubber, uh, uh, rubber sealant with uh, UV protection on it. That way dry Dad, rot. there's a bug on and, you. You know, and, and, and the sun beating down on it. Because once when that becomes all hard and cracking, anything on the outside is gonna get pulled on the inside. Right. So just, you know, every two to three months when you do your maintenance and your upkeep, just you and, and you have those. it uh, at your store, right? Yes, we have the cleaner uh, process. Okay. And then you do have your side rails here. Right. Don't spray anything, that's all just the dry stuff. So you can just okay. get a toothbrush and Get some dirt out of there if you need to. Okay. So. And then you have your additional awning, yes. which is very nice because if you didn't have those, you probably would need to get a step ladder every Clean time. Clean it all the time. Yep, sweep off the top and all that yeah. stuff. So that saves a lot of headaches and aggravations right there. Mm -hmm. Now you do have your park cable and your satellite hookups. Okay. And that'll that'll that's hardwired and that'll feed through all all the other inputs around the unit. Okay. And over here, that's gonna be for city water. Yeah. Uh, this is gonna. Okay. That's gonna be the city water. This is gonna be for your black tank flush. Okay. So, the way that's gonna work, the black tank flush is this well for one over here. You do get a little little basic sewer hose okay so you hook up your sewer hose put it into the sewage drainage pipe right and then at that point you want to go ahead and pull the black valve for mm -hmm. your black tank that's going to be your toilet water right and then when all the toilet water is done then you can pull your gray valve for your gray tank right. and that'll be your soapy waters from your kitchen to shower and that'll come up behind it and kind of help move out any other solids that might have been remaining right if that didn't do a good enough job and then you can hook up to the black tank flush Okay. And then just hold that out. Make sure obviously the valves are open. Otherwise, right. you're having stuff come out of toilets and stuff. Right. Make sure those are all open, and you can flush it that way. Okay. Now for your city hookup, that's where you do need the do need the water pressure regulator, uh, okay. up to 55 pounds of psi, and we recommend taking that uh, pressure regulator mm -hmm. and putting it at the source end of the water. Okay. So down by the spigot, right. put it there. Uh, the reason why, if you have it down in this end, in case you do get a surge of water. You have the big old balloon right here. And it's better off having at that end than down here on this end. Okay. <clears throat> then you do have an outside shower hose right here. Okay. It is operational. Hot water, okay. cold water. Ooh, okay. is and that then, a shower? Yeah. Yep. How, what? And then you can just push the button but if you need we're showering to, you know. in the middle of everybody and everybody. Oh, there's a shower inside too. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're going to wash your feet Especially so if you're down here. playing in the river or creek and you want to wash your feet off or something. or. Uh. Wash you off wash the animals. You wash your pets. Yep, you can do that too. Then I want my pet and I want to bring it. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that because then we might get mud on the inside. <laughs> and that's going to be the same key as your storage okay. keys as well. cord okay so you will have that and like I said you might need to get a pigtail okay if you know if, if you know where you're going as a 50 amp and they don't have 30 okay. then you would need something like that uh-huh <laughs> now I don't see any plates are you all squared away with financing yeah okay I just haven't I guess <clears throat> the salesman hasn't come out here yet so when okay. we do the walk through when we finish the walk through I'll uh, hunt down somebody and get your plates on here for you okay <clears throat> and then you got a brand new spare tire which is okay. nice Okay. And then a uh, ladder that's accessible to the rooftop. Let you me can, go up. You can't walk on the roof. Okay. Uh, there is trusts that are going across side to side. Okay. Wait, you don't have to walk, walk on, on the roof. Okay. You can, but I would be very, very careful up there. I, I, I got a question. Go. 
Yes. So I saw some people, they put a generator here. Mm -hmm. Can you put a, some kind of rack on it and put a generator? You or could, yeah, um, because I mean, you can slide this. <clears throat> this is just basically two U-bolts, pretty much. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, you can slide that down or, you know, take that off and, you know, put this on your vehicle or something and then put your racket on there for a grill or bike grill or whatever it may be. Okay, um, bike, bike uh, yeah. generator? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so generator. Where, where do people usually put the generator? On something like I this, bought a portable generator like 3,500 watt, mm -hmm. um, about 100 pound. Yeah, okay. Some people they'll try to uh, you know get some type of configuration where they can mount it on the back. Other than that, some people will just you know just leave it on the outside by the front door area. That's what some people do too. Okay. So it's what during your, the your, transportation, like where do they put it? Transportation, yeah. um, usually in the in the bed of the truck, typically. Um, but or with the SUV small, people. <laughs> yeah, SUV people. Then I've seen them. I've seen them on racks too. Okay. So yeah, you can't get a rack. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what sizes we have up there. If it would fit a generator, um, I know they have some options up there. But okay. Uh, yeah, I want to find out. It's definitely possible. Okay. Absolutely. I want to find out. Mm -hmm. uh, also, like, uh, so the generator I bought is a uh, dual fuel. Okay. So you can use a uh, propane or gasoline. Oh, nice. So if I use a uh, propane, it's a little bit less trouble, right? Because the the gasoline, it, you know, the smell like I don't right. want to put inside the SUV. I don't want to put inside the. Uh, RV, but uh, right. for propane, maybe I put inside it, no big deal. Right? I, no, I mean, because you're already traveling with the propane, yeah. It, right. It'd be, I, I would say it'd be all right. As long as you're not traveling with the propane tank inside and somebody's in there with you. Right. As long as nobody's in the, inside the vehicle and you have it in there, that's that's fine. Okay. Absolutely. Can we go in now? Uh, yeah, not yet. we. Almost. I think we are done with the outside, unless you guys have any questions about the outside. Uh, on the roof, the it's just some vent and AC and the an antenna. Yep. Right. The roof, the uh, AC, and then um, in the bathroom, there might be a little skylight. Right. Uh, I can't remember on this specific unit, but yeah, yeah other than I think that, it, uh, not... I, I watched the YouTube already okay. many times. <laughs> right, yeah. Yes. Okay. That is if uh, you're inside and you want to have the screen door shut so bugs don't get in, but you want to have this big door open. So this was just so close, no bugs to come in, and then you push that to open the door. Outside door will be this handle here. Well, that when you have when you have the door open, you want to keep this shut. No, when that's closed in, and how do you open? Because you're locked in. Bye bye. You would pull that one right there. Okay. It was right. How do you do this? You gotta just pull real hard. There you go. Did you help me? Ah, let me redo it. No help. Clean it off. Wipe the uh, pawn. Slide one I way yeah. or the I other close way. This? I Can I close this, Daddy? Look, close. <laughs> oh wait, where do I put my shoes? In the closet? Uh, you can keep them on, or you can, you know, take them off. It's up to you. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Oh my come God. On. For a second, I thought there's a bug in here. I was like, ah. Okay. Hey, Casey. Casey, please. Uh, can this the play any the show? Yes, it does. Yay! This is just like my whole channel. Okay, we're safe. So right over here, we have your main panel. It's gonna be for your lights. Okay. Uh, that one's for your outside lights. Okay. Uh, this is just for powers, for your slide and for the awning. And then any light that doesn't come on from flipping that switch, uh -huh. like right here, you would just then do a manual. Okay. So all the other lights would be manuals. Manual. Mm -hmm. okay. And right here's an indicator for your battery. 
Okay. Obviously, we're hooked up, so it's not going to be a hundred percent true reading. Right. Uh, but that just to be a good gauge in the future if you're not hooked up. See how much power you have on your battery. Okay. Your fresh tank is okay. two thirds full, just okay. so we can do demonstrations. Okay. Right. And your black tank's empty, and your gray tank's empty. Okay. And then over here, you have your gas for water heater mm -hmm. or electric. Well, I have it turned on on the electric portion. And then the water pump's turned on too. Is this okay. And then for the awnings, mm -hmm. just give that power, and then you can open them up or close them right there. Okay. So those are pretty straightforward. Not too many buttons to get you confused with. Uh, for the uh, this is awning. What is this? Oh, it's a slide. Yeah, okay. that's the slide which okay. the awnings attach to that. Right. So that but that's awning we don't need to touch. No. Okay. That's all automatic. It'll okay. just be the left side right here. Okay. Daddy, uh, hi. So right now it's a slide out. Yes, right now yeah. it's a slide. Can you get off? Wait, we try and everybody, slide in. this is like where you change. Look, you can okay. change in here. I know. Can it go on the bed, please? Uh, yeah. Can we slide that in? Yeah, okay. slide in. I just want to and see And also in the future, just make be sure careful with slides. Yeah, rocks and pebbles can scrape the little linoleum.